Okay, so as far as picks, and then just uh, look, it's a deep field. So as I mentioned, Fitzpatrick and Aberg are now uh, the co-favorites at 16 to 1, Hatton at 18 to 1. Uh, and then you have Harmon, Henley, Connors, and so forth. Um, so it's not like there's a lot of big names here, but it's a very deep field where you could go down. Like I could go all the way down to like, say, um, you know, even Emiliano Grillo, who won last year is 80 to one, uh, wow. you know, Horschel's 90 to one, you know, so these are players that, um, if it was a considered a, a, a pretty weak field, it would be more like cut in half 30 to one, 40 to one. So it just shows you there's just, and the quality of players, of course, this is going to make it that much tougher uh, every year as it goes on, Jared. And we'll talk about one and dones a little uh, in a little bit too, because uh, that's the game and the contest that uh, you've been playing for a few years. Jan and I uh, started last year, and we're going to continue to play it. And that just, I think, becomes harder and harder to win and to figure out which one player is going to win an event each week. For sure, yeah, and um, yeah, we'll, we'll we'll talk through the strategy again here. It's it's good we're it's good we have these young golfers coming up like Aberg because you know we're we lost John Rahm to yep. the tour. We'll see who follows him there, but um, you know that that that's watered down. It's it's going to make the majors even more exciting though because it's you know, going to be four times a year that we finally you know get to see all these guys playing in the same tournament again. Yeah, it's crazy. We'll uh, again, we'll, we'll draft the live tour guys in just a little bit. So as far as this field, you know, what's interesting is I have, did you know who your picks were last year in this event, Jared? Yes. It's, it's nice. I, you know, I keep all my um, notes for these shows saved so I can go back and look last year, you know, what I said about the course, who I picked. Um, I picked Connors in this tournament last year as well. So yeah. Same, same, same money, same odds. Wow. Well. 25 to one. So Jared's going to invest 40 bucks on Connors at 25 to one. And again, Connors, uh, he's played here five times. He has four top 15s, one top five, but he always, he does not have a top five since this Texas open win. Hmm. Um, so I'm a little, I would be a little bit concerned with that. Uh, but again, this is a good golf course for him. Yeah. I mean, it's concerning. The only, the only tournament he's ever won on the PGA tour is, is Valero. Um, so, uh, but so Connors, he didn't finish well last week. I think he was what, he was 33rd last week at the century, but he was eighth in that field tee to green. He lost seven strokes putting, um, which is always a potential concern with Connor. You know, he's not a good putter, but for whatever reason, he's gained strokes putting in four of his last five appearances here. So he seems to, I don't know, maybe it's luck, but maybe he just, you know, feels good on these greens, feels comfortable on these greens. So I, I, you know, I trust the ball striking to be there. And then if we can get him, you know, gaining strokes on the green, um, I think he has a really good chance to win this, this event. We talked now, about, I like, I like, I like Connors and he, you know, you, he finished second in the, the mixed team championship, the Grant Thornton that they had in Naples at the end of the year. So he has been playing and uh, he played really well and he actually putted quite well in that tournament. We talked about uh, international players uh, who have had success here, three out of the last four, four to the last eight. And out of our nine picks, seven of them are international players. Uh, Co Corey Connors leads your list. Ryan Fitzpatrick leads my list as one of the co-favorites. Uh, I, I just think right now he's dialed back in again. I know last year wasn't a great year for him. We were a little bit surprised that he just wasn't very consistent, but he gained uh, his game again late in the year, eight straight top 30s, six of those top 15s, four of those top fives, a runner up and a win. He's the highest ranked player in the field. He's eighth. Uh, Harmon, by the way, ninth. Those are the only top 10 players in the field. Played last week, played pretty well last week as well. So, yeah, I, I think uh, the way he's playing, I, I believe he's definitely the class of the field. That doesn't mean he's going to guarantee win, but um, I definitely think he should be the favorite of this event. And, um, and I'm not even sure Terrell Hatton should be second or third, to tell you the truth. Uh, he only has two top tens in his last eight events. He did have a runner-up at the BMW PJ Championship. But, uh, yeah, it's not like Terrell Hatton's on his game, and yet he's got the same odds as, as Fitzpatrick. I'm a little bit surprised by that. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Neither well, of those guys, neither Hatton nor Fitzpatrick, has ever played Sony. Yep. Um, I think Fitzpatrick, especially, he, you know, again, he's seventh on my list of um, best players on the short par 70. So, like, he's done well at these types of courses. So, it should be a good, good fit for his game. 
Well, and plus, you know, they've they've been uh, they still base out of England, even though um, Fitzpatrick and Hatton still play a lot in. Well, actually, Fitzpatrick bases out of Hilton Head, and uh, Hatton has been playing in in Florida. The fact that they can get to Hawaii and warm up on their game, and with the change of the rules at the Century, where now it's the top fifty and it's one of the designated tournaments, so the field was a lot stronger, a lot more players. And a lot of them decided to like make this a let's let's make this a two week venture and and because they know the weather's going to be great they can work on their game you know i love terrell hatton swing i just love it and it's and it's a little left to right which is good because across in some of those if you're right to left and a couple of those dog legs you got to be careful you don't hit it too far left too quickly um and fitzpatrick i heard well you know he got engaged last year and and that was he was pretty busy ah, with there that. you go see that distracted him <laughs> that'll distract anybody <laughs> yeah he was dating he was going back and forwards to hilton head she's from hilton head she's a chiropractor see? so he was pretty busy with that and um now that they're engaged and i'm it's out of the way wedding stuff so anyway yeah. that, that i think he settled down and she's with him in hawaii and cool. they, they say he's rolling it really well well there you go so uh, that's what you can count on this year on, on, on this channel, uh, Jan's inside information on these players. By the yeah. way, we're going to record, as I was just mentioning before, so we're going to record your first full insider segment, which will be on Monday. And so we'll have it on the channel on Monday. Uh, so keep an eye on that because that's going to be – we're going to have all of the players that you need to keep an eye on for all sorts of reasons for 2024. Um, yeah, we'll try to get some insider scoop. I'm, I'm actually got a call in from – one of the caddies on the live tour to get some insider on ah, those guys. Too. That's right. Live tour too. We'll have a little bit. Uh, Cause that's a uh, matter of fact, I think they're, you know, I was looking over it to go over our draft and there seems to be a pretty good field now of about 30 players. So yep. that's, that's okay. Nothing wrong with that. So getting better. Getting yeah. better. Again, the team thing distracts you when you're watching it and the whole visual and the way they produce the, the event is still, it's, it's, it's kind of distracting, but um, yeah, it's just a better field. Okay, so uh, your number two pick, and by the way, I put uh, 45 on Fitzpatrick at 16 to 1. You put uh, also 40 on Henley. Is that, is, that, is that correct? No, Rose, excuse me. You had Henley last year. Uh, I was thinking about Henley because you drafted him. Uh, Justin Rose, who I drafted. So you have Justin Rose at 35 to 1 and Hideki Matsuyama at 45 to 1 as your next two, as your next two picks, uh, Jared. Uh, you put 25 on each. Yeah, so Rose, um, he had a he had a weird week last week. I don't know if you guys saw he got the two stroke penalty on Thursday for hitting the wrong golf ball. He hit, <laughs> he hit Taylor Morris golf ball. Okay. I don't know how he, he shot, do that. Yeah, he shot he so he, he shot a seventy one on um, Thursday, which you know kind of took him out of it. But he shot a sixty one on Sunday, um, so he's kind of rolling into this week off a hot like round. It. He led. He led the entire field in approach on Sunday with second in tee to green. So hopefully he can kind of carry that momentum into this week. Rose hasn't played here since 2017, but he did come in second that year. And then he came in 12th and 13th in his two appearances here before yeah. that, that. So um, he, he's had success here. It's just, it's just been a while. Um, yep. And, you know, R Rose, is, he's, he's number one for me in the stat model I ran this week, just based on the stuff I'm looking at. I looked at, you know, Driving accuracy, Rose is fifth in good drives gained. He's second in this field in approach. He's first in uh, greens and regulation gain. So yeah, more of the accuracy, accuracy stuff I looked at, Rose, um, last year was very good at. So I, I think I think this course should should fit him. And Matsuyama, uh, three top 20s in 10 appearances at this yeah. event. And he won here just a couple of years ago. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I didn't go into this week um, – expecting to bet Hideki, but I just think 45 to one is just way too big of a number for him in this field. I still think he's one of, you know, the best five or six players in this field. And like you said, Greg, he won here just a couple of years ago. So I'm, I'm still confused. He, now he, Hideki did, was not good last week, which is probably why he's at these odds. Um, but again, I'm not too worried about that. I, I, I like the fact that he played last week, hopefully knock some of the rust off. And again, you know, he's, he's won here before and he didn't, he didn't play that well, at the century before winning here. So like he, he's, he's done this before where he didn't play well, then he, he gets the Y line and wins. So Jan, do we still have to keep an eye on him as far as his back and his neck or is that past history? Well, it just depends on the weather. If it gets windy, he's not a great wind player. If it's, if it stays calm, I, I like his odds because it's, you know, again, you've got a good feel for the golf course when you've won there. 
and he he took some time off and, and uh, came to Vegas late be, just to warm up for a week and then went back to Hawaii. So he's he took quite a bit of time off in Japan. It's too cold to play there. So he's it, that last week was a good warm up week for him. And, and I agree. I mean, it's a good golf course for him. He hits the ball very high. So if it gets windy, it's a little more difficult to control. When he won there, it wasn't that windy. So, and, but the scores were really low. So he was making everything and um, he's good on slow greens. The greens in Japan tend to be very slow compared to American. And even though he's one of the masters, but the greens were a little bit slower that year. So he's somebody that likes them, you know, cause he, he likes to, he's, I would think it's his weakest part of his game, but he's in, and um, he gets too tentative. Whereas the really good part is just kind of jam him in, but there is a lot of grain on those greens. They're playing that new pus pollen on the greens but it's still grainy and it's kind of sticky. So um, they, they were complaining last week because that grass is really hard to chip off, you know, get against the grain and they were chunking them a lot and it catches the edge of the club. So I, I think his chipping is probably the next week as part of his game. So if he's hitting it good, it doesn't matter. Speaking of last week, I just I get this off my chest. I, look, I, I don't know. The players are obviously getting better every year. And I know that this event was designed for like, uh, let's just have fun and have some 10, 15 top players come. And But now they're trying to make it more serious. If they're going to try to make it more serious with the field, please toughen this golf course up then. I don't know how you do mm -hmm. it, but nobody wants to see 28 under par, 26 under That's just, that's, you know, it's a little bit, nobody needs to see that. So if you're going to make it a serious golf course, make it a signature event, toughen up, toughen up the golf course. Can they toughen up a golf course like that, Jan? Well, it, to me, it's a hard golf course because it's so hill elevated and I can't get to cross. I can't get over those hills, whereas nowadays they're just bombing them over the hills and they all go in the same spot, which I don't like as far as golf course design. But it's because the course is so hilly. It's it, and the, the wind didn't blow. You know, when yeah. the wind blows, the scores get different. They, it blew on Saturday and the scores got a little bit up. So, it, it, you, you know, you're at the mercy of the weather. It's always going to be warm. But if it's windy and in and rainy, then it's a little different. They can't make it any longer because the golf course then wouldn't be fair to the shorter hitters. Not that there's many short hitters playing in How that. How about the place. rough? <laughs> but the rough, yeah, they need to make the rough, definitely need to grow up the rough. And I would firm up the greens. You know, they tend to get the greens too wet and then they spin it back and then they can save themselves because there's a couple of blind shots there where they can hit it, you know, as long as you don't hit it short where it comes back to you. So they hit it long and suck it back to the pin. So if you made the greens where they were firm, and I think that's the whole key. They keep saying, oh, you've got to make the golf courses longer for the players. Let's make a ball go shorter for them. All they're going to do is, like you said, Greg, is is row up the rough and firm up the greens. And you miss and, and you're in trouble. And you just don't have that out there. All right. Uh, last week's second place finisher is my second pick this week, uh, Thigala at 30 to 1. I'm also going with Benny on at 30 to 1 as my third pick. Of course, uh, Jared talked about on and the stats that really work well. Mm -hmm. Thigala's got five top 20s in his last seven. He's got the win at Fortinet, the runner up last week. Played here a couple years ago, uh, eight under par, 48. So that's good enough for me. And on, not only the stats, uh, 12th last year here. Fourth last week, three top fives in his last six, including a runner-up at Wyndham. And Jan is going to talk about uh, why he is somebody to keep an eye on uh, in the Insider Report for 2024. Uh, so uh, I just invested uh, 25 in Thigala and 20 on On. And then my last two picks were Kucher and Norin. Kucher 50 to 1, Norin 55 to 1. I put five bucks on each. And Jared, his uh, long shot was Nick Taylor, the Canadian at 70 to 1. You put 10 bucks on Taylor, Jared. Yeah, my, the second Canadian on my card. And I yes. didn't even bet my favorite Canadian, who is Adam Spenson, who is in this field. Um, and it's on your fantasy team. That'd be That'd be, yeah, that'd be painful if he, he wins and I'm not on him. But um, <laughs> yeah, I just I, I like the number on Nick Taylor. Obviously, the, the big win at the Canadian Open last year. Um, 11th and 7th, his last two times here. Now, both of those have been on hot putters, which okay. is a little worrisome. Um, you know, the ball striking has just been OK for Taylor at this event. Um, but I, I just like the um, the number. I think he's you know he's better than this number. And again, he he's a guy who he played last week. He wasn't great, but I just I like the fact that he played. Yeah. And, you know, was able to, it was able to knock some rust off. It's not his first event in, you know, two or three months. And you mentioned Kuchar also plays well here. Uh, eight top tens yes. and 18. 
five top fives, a win in 2019. Matter of fact, lately, he's got eight top 15s in his last 10 with seven top 10s, four top fives, and a win. Uh, and 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 he's playing better lately because he didn't have a great year last year, but he is playing better. Three top 20s in his last five, runner-up at that Worldwide Technology Championship event, which he was leading big until he got a, I don't know, what did he have, like a quadruple bogey? I never seen some ugly to watch. Oh, my oh. God. I kept, he kept chunking it, hitting it, coming back at yes. him, and he tried it. And he kept get, hitting that hybrid. It's like it's not working. Change to a – and he's such a great wedge player. I was shocked he did that. He had like, what, a six-stroke lead or something like that, and he went off the green. He was like tied. It was amazing. So anyway, yeah. um, that was a runner-up for him. And uh, and then, of course, uh, as I mentioned to uh, the other long shot being uh, Norin, who has two top fives in his last four events. Okay. Um, anybody else before we move on, uh, uh, Jared, that you wanted to mention? Um, you, you mentioned Grio. I think he, um, is someone I'm still considering just at the number 80 or 90 to one. In this yeah. That's field. a big number. Yeah. 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 Um, and then the other, the other guy I'm, um, still looking at who actually bat last week is Tom Hoagie. Um, who's just a really good wedge player. I think he's, you know, he, he won at, um, Pebble, which is another, you know, short course. Um, and Hoagie was third in last week's field in strokes gain approach. So the, the iron play was there. He just, he didn't make enough putts. So uh, I think Hoagie's still like a hundred to one. Uh, so wow. he's something to, to maybe look at. Definitely a good one. What's, what's Eric call? What's his odds? Uh, he's Pretty low. 28 30, now, 35, I believe. 28. Yeah. yeah he's wow. gone down to 28 to one. That's kind of why I stayed away from him. I like him. We all like him. How can you not the way yep. he's playing? He's got five top 15s in his last six, four top fives and a runner up at the Zozo. He hasn't won yet. So that's coming, but yeah, uh, that those odds I think were just a little too low for me. Now that he's twenty eight to one, Kirk's trying to make it back to back. He's playing here. Uh, he actually has been runner up here twice. You mentioned to him in the stats. McCarthy is somebody to keep an eye on maybe as well. Uh, he his odds aren't that bad. Your boy Cam Davis is playing this week. Zalatoris started off at thirty to one, which was the biggest joke in the world. I mean, now he's <laughs> fifty to one. He should be two hundred yeah. to one. The guy is not winning this week. It's going to take us some time. Uh, and and he even played in the hero when he was the last place. I mean, come right. on, just give the guy a little time. And I know you were a little bit concerned with Zalatoris too because of uh, the injury. It's not something that's you know who knows how he's going to respond to it. Yeah, you know, it's it's one that I'm concerned with. I know I know Jared loves Zalatoris, and I like him as a person. Um, I think he's great. You know, his putting's always been horrible. But the thing that concerns me is that with his golf swing, it's kind of like Ashte um, Batia's. Is that um, he's he's somebody they have they call it the X factor, where your hips um, start down before you finish your backswing, and there's a huge um, lash then with that, and because of his back. That's going to be a major problem. That's what they keep saying about Batia. If he ever put on weight and didn't have that X factor, um, he would not be able to hit it as far. So I, I'm concerned with him how much he, that's his second surgery. And this was a major surgery. Um, you know, this was kind of dangerous. And so I think he's going to be very tentative. I, if he goes if he goes out there hard, I'll be shocked. Yeah. Did, 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 he, did he change his swing? I thought I saw something about him changing his swing post he had to change it otherwise he wouldn't yeah. be able to walk um but right. it, you know and it's still he's still got a good golf swing and it might actually be better for him now because he's kind of going to do like um a couple of the players have done is shorten their follow-through so it's a little more compact and um it doesn't have you know that x factor what they call it there's this certain term for it that it's, it's it's x something or rather where it's the you know the difference between the hip and the and your shoulder yeah. on the way down and I, I heard his swing is a lot more compact, but still, I don't know what happens once the gun goes off, what, how you, you know, if you can keep that going yeah. and it's, he's only changed for the last year. So I don't know. All right. Now, before we move out one and done, and again, we're going to be talking about this. So I have three players that I'm, I'm thinking about with one and done and you have to, you know, it's the first event of the season. So there's a whole bunch of strategy involved there. But one of the guys that I am looking at, and we just mentioned, actually, all, obviously, all three of them, but we just mentioned him, and that's Eric Hall. I mean, now I would mention him in this one because he's hot. 
I don't know how, I mean, I don't know if he's going to continue to be hot this year. You know, he's still, yeah. I know he's 35. It's not like he's 25, but still he's, he's, he's new to, to, to success on the PGA tour. So I'm thinking this week may not be a bad week to take him. I'm also looking mm-hmm. at the gala and I'm looking at Benny on same thing. Mm-hmm. Now, Jan is going to talk about why she thinks he could be hot all year, but we don't know that. And he, this might be a perfect time to take someone like Benny on, um, Anyway, those are the three players that I'm thinking about. Who are you thinking about taking this week, Jared? One and done. Yeah, I have three players I'm thinking about too, but they're three different guys than you. Um, so Corey Connors and Justin Rose, I'm considering. Um, I, I just, you know, again, I just like both of them this week. Um, the, the other guy is Russell Henley, who I just think this is like just thinking for the rest of the season, like what other spot would be better to use Russell Henley? I'm not sure there is one. Uh, not, my, my concern with Henley would be like, is he going to be the most popular pick, which is always tough to know beforehand, but I do think a lot of people will be on Henley. So I'm pro I'm right now I'm leaning towards Connors. I just, I, re- I just really like Connors this week. Um, so that that's my lean as of now, but I, I might end up going to uh, Henley or Rose. Have you done any, uh, work on this yet, Jan? Oh, yeah. Um, I, I'm, I actually am interesting about Justin Rose because he was not on my radar. Uh, obviously, I've got Eric is up there, and uh, I'm not going to do Ben Arn on this one. I had him at first because, you know, I'm, I'm so on. I love his new coach and what they've done with the swing and then, you know, and the new putting style. But it, he hits it. They're, they're, they're carrying on how because he's gained like 20 yards that he's going to be great. But, you know, Distance isn't the big thing on this golf course. I like uh, Corey Connors. I'm going to probably go with JT Poston. I mean, JT yeah, Poston is such a good putter, and he played well last week. I don't know that he finished well, but I think he shot like five or six hundred, which is kind of like par over there <laughs> yeah. um, at Kapalua. But it's I think it's a good golf course for him, and, he's, and his short game is so good. So he's somebody I'm looking at. So I'm probably going to keep Ben on for a longer golf course. 